one of my favorite, favorite people in the entire planet, John Broman, who is the owner and founder of Front Row Foundation, now uh, turned, then we also have Front Row Factor, we have Front Row Dads, you know, Front Row everything. Um, so John, thank you for making the time to uh, come on live with me here today. Oh, it's so good to be with you. And uh, what's up, everybody? Good to meet you. What's up? What's up? Well, I'll tell you what's up. We are having the Author Up Live event, and it is coming right around the corner. I cannot believe it's only 27 days out, oh. June 3rd and 4th, with partners Mike Michalowicz and AJ Harper. Guys, this event is so exciting. We are literally putting our all into this event for you. If you are somebody that plans on launching, anything in the future, ideally a book, but it doesn't just have to be a book. So if you're even launching a membership program or a website or a podcast or anything, you have to have a plan and you need enough time to market and launch. And so at this event, we are going to go deep with you about marketing, launch, relationships, influencers, our early bird discount pricing ends at the end of this week. So if you have been watching these live streams and you're thinking, oh, I'm definitely going to be there, you should probably get your seats this week before the prices go up. The reason that I have John here is because John, we knew from the very beginning that we wanted to promote Front Row Foundation as a part of what we're doing with Author Up Live. I think it's really important that as we go out into the world to do more good, that we use it as an opportunity to double down on that and do even more good. I think it's important that we have a focus on giving back, on bringing in community, and on raising the bar for other people in our industry. And so as part of the Author Up Live event, um, anybody who joins and comes to the event, we were going to donate $500 to Front Row Foundation, which we're going to get into what is Front Row in just a second. But I'm just going to do something even more interesting and sweet in the pot, that for those of you that on checkout enter in the code FRF for Front Row Foundation, we are going to donate $1,000 to Front Row Foundation. Guys, I really, really want to donate a lot of money to Front Row Foundation. So be sure to use code FRF. So John, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell us about Front Row Foundation. Why should we be so excited to donate to your charity? Wow. I, I love that question. It's one of my favorite things to talk <laughs> about. And uh, the good news is I've been talking about it for 13 years. So I think <laughs> I've got it down to like the shortest amount of words. So if you're listening, uh, let me give you in uh, a statement what we do, but then also a story. In a statement, we help kids and adults who have a life-threatening illness to get a front row type experience at the event of their dreams. So think Make-A-Wish, but very niche. And uh, there is something that distinguishes Front Row from other wish-granting organizations was that we were the first ones to blend personal growth with, 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 with wish-granting. And what that means is people have often said, John, your Front Row is like Make-A-Wish meets Tony Robbins, where we want to not only help people have this incredible day, but help them to live all their days you know, to the, to the, uh, to the fullest potential that they can. And so that's what makes Front Row unique. Now, here's a quick story. And this is the heartbeat of the organization. This is why we do it. So, you know, back in 2007, we were just getting rolling with the charity. And one of my good friends, John, came to me and said, hey, buddy, I know you started this charity. I'm a big fan. I'm a donor. I love what you're up to. And I just found out that my friend's daughter uh, is battling a brain tumor. She's in and out of the hospital constantly, surgeries radiations. She's really having some, you know, difficult days, a lot of dark moments for her. But I also heard that she's a really big fan of Kelly Clarkson. And her mm -hmm. mom told me that every night before they go to bed, they do Kelly Clarkson dance parties. <laughs> and uh, immediately I fell in love with this girl who I'd never met, but wanted to do something for her. And so did many others. So we rallied, we raised some money, we called in some favors, uh, we used, we utilized a very powerful network. So this is props to everybody who helped and we made the event possible for her. And here's what it looked like, picking her up in a limousine, she's in a purple dress, we spoil her with her favorite gifts, she's on cloud nine all day, eating at her favorite restaurant, the Rainforest Cafe, if you've ever been there, it's like animals come to life and there's a thunderstorm <laughs> yeah. and all that. And then off to the show where she saw Kelly Clarkson. 
uh, had an amazing show and she thought it was all over. But what she didn't know is we got her backstage. And this little girl went backstage and met Kelly Clarkson. We have photographs of the whole thing, which you can see on our website. And one of those photographs actually hangs on the wall right next to me as a reminder of why we do what we do. Now, I want to tell everybody what I'm about to say is going to hit you hard and it's going to hit you right in your heart. But I need to tell you this because you, you, you're, you make a difference when you support Front Row. So um, tragically, eight weeks after that event took place, um, Sophie took her final breath. And we were all so crushed at her at the loss. Um, and uh, we were also yet very joyful that we could play a role in making what her mom said was one of the greatest days of her daughter's life and her life, seeing her daughter have such a good time. And the part that really got to me, Amber, was that at Sophie's funeral, um, our team went to support and came back and told us that little Sophie uh, was laying there in her casket. Um, and I told you this was going to hit you hard. So everybody listening, I apologize. This is coming at you hard right away. But I got, I've got to let you know what impact you make. That laying there in her casket on her chest was her Kelly Clarkson VIP badge. Oh my God. And the minute that my team told me that, and the minute that oh. uh, I, the minute that we, yeah, I, I know it's like, I've never, I've, I've cried so many times telling this story over the years. Um, and what's so surprising about that to me, Amber, is that even to my own, my own surprise uh, that I could feel so many strong emotions to a girl, a little girl that I never met personally that I was just part of creating this special day for. And there was a lot of people that really helped, but it really made me appreciate life and the moments that we have. And that if we have the privilege to have this beating heart and this functioning brain and then our ability to take action, that whatever we do in our lives, we should try to utilize that strength, those strengths that we have to help other people in some sort of way. Because while uh, you know, lots of people today will be experiencing their brightest and best moments, there are other people who are in the darkest moments of their lives and need a little love and a little light. And so that's what we do um, for very deserving people. And we would love for everybody to just be a part of it. And even if, that, if that's just by you going to Author Up Live, by you focusing on making your life better at the exact same moment, you're going to help somebody like Sophie and her family to have one of the best days of their life. So you'll probably be having your best day ever at Author Up Live and then immediately helping somebody else to have theirs. Oh my God. This like every single time I talk to John, my heart is just like wide open. And it's such a powerful reminder that we can all give more, we can all do more and we can do it at the same time as elevating our, our goals as well. And so um, I'm really grateful to Mike and AJ that they were totally on board and so excited to use this as an opportunity to give more to Front Row. <laughs> there we go, Mike McCallowitz. And uh, it's just so special. So again, if you join Author Up Live, use checkout code FRF for Front Row Foundation. And we are going to double down on our donation and give Front Row a thousand dollar donation just by you coming. Mm -hmm. And this is not the end of our journey with Front Row at all. Um, in fact, you know, I have uh, participated in events before where we were really fundraising for Front Row and I plan to do that long, long, long term as well. And if for some reason you can't come to the event, then go donate anyway, get involved. John is awesome. So thank you for sharing that, that story, John. And another reason that I am really excited to have this live stream with, with John is that John launched his own book and he has sold over 10,000 copies of that book now. And, you know, what's really great about that is that first of all, that he sold so many copies, right? The average title out there is selling maybe a thousand copies in the life of the book, maybe 2000. And largely it's the author buying those copies. Um, so he really had a great launch. He then continued to sell books ongoing and then leveraged that to further his impact, to build his platform. He's doing a lot of speaking. So John, I was hoping I could just let you talk about that for a minute, the experience of the launch. If there are any um, you know, strategies that you had that contribute to that level of success, if it was your relationships, was it something else and how you're really using that book to elevate your speaking career moving forward? Yeah. 
Well, I'll see if the, in the timeline of how I put that together, if I go back to one of our mutual friends, one of my best buddies who kept telling me, John, if you write a book, it'll change your life. Um, that, that's how Elrod, who wrote The Miracle Morning, and uh, that book certainly changed his life and the lives of many others. And after a couple of years of him talking to me about this, we finally did it. And um, I, I will tell you that it, he's, he's been, it's true. It's, he's, it's totally accurate that having the book out there has been critical. So why the book? I mean, one, it was to honor the charity. So it is everything you can learn about living life from people who are fighting for it, right? So it's the story of Front Row. And it's also all the things that we can apply in our lives to be moment makers for people we love and care about as well, right? Uh, so, so one is it's honoring the charity. Um, two, I will tell you that the reason for the book is a legacy piece for the kids, right? I want my kids mm -hmm. to know their dad. And if anything were ever to happen to me, if I get on a plane that doesn't land one day, I just want there to be documents that help to teach my kids what I think are important elements of life, but also so they know their dad, you know? And I think that the different ways that we can do that, uh, they all are great. Book is one of them, right? And so even if you wrote a book just for your kids, I think that's a good reason. Love that. And now why the book was successful in its launch, I have to give all the credit to our incredible community. It definitely was the relationships. So I called in all the, I, I called on all my friends in, in, in to involve them in the ways that they could be involved. So for example, you know, Hal wrote the foreword and there, by the way, there were 30 or 40 of my friends who edited the book, you know, read the book yeah. and gave feedback along the way. Uh, we called on you and your team to help us to develop a launch plan. And you shared with us great strategies that ended up being a big part of the success, like creating the bundles that we did, mm -hmm. right? Where we had, hey, if you buy this many books, you get this. And we sold a lot of books through those bundles. Um, we, so we, we had a great launch team. You know, the reality is that I think if you really brought it, it came down to like why it was successful, we, we involved people all along the way. Yeah. So they were involved for so long they all knew the book was coming. They were totally uh, on board. We had built this incredible launch team, which if anybody's listening for the first time, they go, what does that mean? What is a launch team? We, we just got, we got 200 of our friends to all say, hey, look, we'll read the book. You know, we'll, we'll get an early copy on a PDF before it even is sent out. We'll read it. And then when you launch it, we'll, we'll all commit to buy a copy and review it. Since we've already read the book, we'll write a review of the book. And right away, we started, you know, generating reviews. People were sharing it. We were asking, you know, read, review, <clears throat> and share. That was our concept. And it really worked. Um, so right away, we sold thousands and thousands of copies. We hit over 100 reviews, I think, on day one of the book. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and uh, that was very, very exciting. Uh, and so, and from there, it's parlayed into many different things, including donors of the charity, uh, people that have attended live events because of it, and um, including my speaking has continued to progress, you know, which has been really good. So there's a lot of benefits to doing the book and to doing it the right way. But the one thing I didn't try to do is do it all myself. I definitely wanted to learn from the pros and involve a bunch of people. And I think that's where we, 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 we won. If, if there is winning in that case, which I felt from a personal victory, that's what I meant by winning. I, we hit our goals. That's really awesome. And I really appreciate you sharing all of that. Um, so the highlights that I'm taking away are that community is probably the biggest part of it, right? Yes. And so even if you're somebody listening that <clears throat> you just have an idea that someday eventually you want to write a book, but it's, it's not like you're thinking about the launch of it right now. That's actually mistake number one. Too many authors go out and they write their book, get it published, whether it's self, you know, probably self-published. And then they think, okay, now what? Right. But you should be thinking about the marketing plan and the launch of that from day one that you decide you even want to write a book. Um, and to speak to what Mike Michalowicz is doing, he literally writes the book as he's doing a year round of marketing for that book so that he can take information from his community or ideas and insert them into the book so that by the time the book is launched, he already is promoting all of these various different channels or promoting his influencers that have agreed to help him support the book. Like there are so many different elements of it that you can do when you have a clear plan and you know your direction from the beginning. And it's not just limited to that, right? Because even if you already have a book that's launched like John, most people don't realize that you can relaunch a book, 
right? There, you, you might not even be thinking about that. So if your book was kind of a dud in the beginning, even if you hit number one on Amazon, you know, maybe you didn't sell very many copies, or even if you did, why not relaunch it? Why not spend another six month campaign or 10 month campaign where you're really rallying community, right? You're breathing life into your platform. You're giving back, you're you're leveraging relationships and creating win-wins for the greater good of all. And then you relaunch that book and then just ride that up, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to drop that as an idea too, that kind of came to me while you were talking, John, I appreciate that. And I just feel so blessed that John, you are coming to author up live. I didn't know that that was possible, but man, I'm pretty fired up about that. Why are you excited to come? Is there anything that you know, helped you make that decision. Yeah, well, I, I am so fired up. You know this, but not a, but people watching don't know this. And I, this won't have a ton of uh, weight in their mind, but I, I want to say this because I think it's important anyway. And that is that I moved another event to go to yours. I so know. I literally had another event and, and canceled it. Luckily, I could. Out of integrity, I, you know, this was an event I could do. I didn't bail on anybody. I just bailed a, <laughs> a commitment to myself to go to that because this one's more important on many levels. And one is that I find that if we believe in something, right, if we, if we have a message that we deeply believe is important for the world, it, I, I find a sense of duty, uh, responsibility to figure out ways to get it to as many people as possible. I'll never yeah. forget, I was at a Tony, Ro- Tony Robbins event in my mid 20s. We're talking almost 20 years ago that this, was, this happened. And I remember uh, Tony was talking about that very idea that he said somebody somewhere is um, desperately searching for your wisdom and Mm -hmm. your guidance Um, because we're not here to be leaders for everybody, uh, but we are here to be leaders for somebody. Mm. And while we can't be everybody's teacher and not everybody's going to like you or like your book or your message or whatever, there is somebody out there that uh, we need to send the the elevator down for and help them up, right? We need to put our hand down and say, let me help you. Now, I'm not about enabling people. I'm not about doing it for them. I mean, I've got two boys and trust me, if you watch me parent, like I want them to struggle, right? Yeah. I want them to figure out how to put their shoes on by themselves, right? I, that's okay, right? Uh, but we, we all need to be in the position where if you've been gifted, if you're watching this video, you've been blessed, right? Like you have, you're fortunate, right? If you're watching this video. And so you have something to offer somebody. And so I think that the reason I'm excited to be there is that I I don't look at it solely through, like, I don't look at it solely through the lens of, hey, I want to sell more books. So my ego's bigger and I make more money. Although both those things are fine. Like if you feel (laughs) proud of yourself and you happen to make a lot of money, that's wonderful, right? Because money just amplifies the good within you if there's yes. good within you, right? So um, yeah, anyway, I think the point is I want to be there because I want to help other people through this message. And I want to get my, even like I had to get out of my own way for that. Like I was like, oh, the book's not that good. Nobody wants to hear from me. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Like, you know, look, I'm not here for everybody. Not everyone's going to like it, but I've got to get that book out there for the people that do, because enough people have come back to us and said, I'm so glad I read your book. You know, there was this one woman who came to me and said, my daughter read your book. And it's the reason she's doing X, Y, and Z now. And I was like, oh, oh that makes me feel so good. So rad. Oh, you got those stories. That. Like, that's what I want. So I don't want to chase the accolades so yeah. much so that I could do this, but I want to chase the stories. I always say like a sign of a successful year is oftentimes how many thank you letters you get, right? How many mm-hmm. kind emails or nice compliments that you get. That to me is a, a, a major part of defining your success in life. And if you don't know how to get your message out there, you're not going to get a lot of those people that their lives are changed because of you. But look, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to reach everybody. Amber's not going to be able to reach everybody. You got to go to this event. And that's why I want to go is to, you know, to be a part of this, like, Hey, let's all move our messages forward. That's awesome. I really appreciate you saying that. And for your time here today, John, I know we went a little bit over what I originally wanted, but I can't get enough of you. Uh, (laughs) And I just, you know, I'm so 
grateful for the work that you're doing in the charity. It is truly my honor to help push your message forward in that way. Um, and for everybody in the room, I'm, I'm excited about Mike's launch and what AJ is doing to participate in that. And everybody in the room, we have seriously some of the most remarkable people coming to this event. And like, I can't even wait. So 27 days. Early bird discount ends at the end of this week. Get your ticket now, but use the code FRF so we can donate $1,000 to Front Row Foundation. Thank you all for your time and we'll see you on the next live stream.